Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. We have an exciting one for you. Um, we're gonna be working with um, a horse that is an off the track thoroughbred that has gotten very impulsive um, at the canter. And uh, we're gonna see if we can get her to relax and have responsibility for her speed. So let me give you a little bit more background um, on this uh, thoroughbred. So she was raced until she was seven. She had a pretty successful racing career. And then she got put into, um, I don't know what the in-between was between racing and eventing, but she got into eventing and they were using it for jumping. Um, she got to where she was kind of charging the jumps pretty strong and getting pretty high-headed and bracy there. So the main reason she's with me is to help her have better impulsion, to learn how to rate her speed and be more responsible for that. Now, when we were playing with her on the ground, we noticed she had this similar issue. It was hard for her to stand still. She would want to react and bolt through gates. So we decided to take a few days and get, get her uh, to be more responsible and understanding things on the ground first. So we've been doing that. If you'd like to see a video of, of one of the training sessions with her on the ground, that's on my Patreon page. So now we're gonna be doing our first ride with her under saddle. And in this ride, I decided to take the snaffle off of her and put her in a rope halter. And the reason we did this is she's gonna have a lot of history of pushing through the snaffle, kind of bracing her head up with that. And I'm hoping to, now that we're gonna be riding her with a little different style, a little different feel, I'm hoping to bypass some of that previous language and history by going to the halter instead of the snaffle. We will be getting her back into the snaffle, um, but we're gonna take as many rides as we need to until she understands um, some of the, to have responsibility for her speed and direction on a loose rein. So let's jump into that first ride and we'll show you how it went. We've warmed her up on the ground, trying to get her to think, doing some side passing, doing some circling. We did bring her life up a little bit at the canter, which kind of gets up that impulsion that we really need to work on. And um, I feel pretty good about where she's at standing still. It's a, it's a windy uh, Monday. Um, it's, a, it's a windy day, and so the horses are apt to be a little more fresh and, and kind of nervous today. But overall, I'm pretty happy with where she's feeling, and I feel like it's a good day to ride her for the first time. Um, there is one more uh, check that I'm going to go through that I just wanted to share with you guys because I thought it would be a valuable thing uh, to show you. It's a pre-ride check that I like to do with them. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my lead rope on the other side of her. And, uh, and then I'm going to put over here. And I'm doing this, a big part of this is because I'm going to ride her with the rope halter. I'm not going to ride her with a bit. All of her previous riding experiences were with a bit. And so I'm trying to get to her mind, okay? And so... If I start to control her with the bit, it's gonna feel very similar to what, what's uh, kind of been going on in the past. And what I wanna do is ride her with the rope halter because I think it'll bypass some of that and I think there might be some already built-in anxiety from the bit because of her having her life up when, when she was being controlled with the bit. So we're gonna start it without the bit. We are gonna reintroduce the bit, but we're gonna do that after we have some, some good communication with her, okay? So we're gonna start off making sure she gives to this rope halter well. So I'm just gonna put a little feel here yeah, and uh, yeah, that's what I was wanting to see right there. Um, now, she went a little faster than we wanted, but she followed the feel and moved to the pressure well. She can lower her head well to it. She can uh, back up off the halter. And she can also do lateral flexion from the halter, which kind of was just proved with what we did there. Um, but this is all the control I need to feel like I could ride her um, safely with the, with the rope halter. So, now that I know she knows um, some of these, these basics, we can go ahead and step on her. Okay, so this is our, our first ride on flow here. And uh, we've gotten her a little more settled on the ground. And uh, what this ride is gonna be all about, a couple things, um, is mostly it's about being able to, to give her a loose rein and help her to settle and be responsible for her own impulsion. You can see, just putting up a little feel here, her first thought is that head up. So when I make contact with the halter, her first thought is to brace into it um, and not to give. And so I don't have a lot of control physically in a rope halter, but the idea is that I'm gonna get some control over her mentally and emotionally through um, leveraging kind of body position. So like doing things like this where I yield the hindquarters and then also the feel and timing of releasing when she's mentally soft versus just trying to control her physically with a bit. Um, and again, she has, uh, just from some of the pictures and videos I've seen, um, she's kind of gotten where she, she kind of pushes through it. And I think there's gonna be a lot of emotions associated with the bit. Again, I haven't ridden her with the bit, but that's why I'm choosing to go with the rope halter. I'm trying to bypass 
those things by having something different that she's not, not used to. And um, just get, establishing a starting point is what I'm trying to do, where she can re be responsible for her speed on a loose rein. That's the name of the game. We'll start off at a walk and at a trot, and then we'll build it up into a, into a canter. And so it's just going to be a lot of approaching and retreating where we kind of ask her to go. She's getting used to the Western saddle and um, lots, lots of kind of different things going on for her. But so far I'm liking how this feels. I can trust her on a loose rein here at a walk, which is good. And I'm going to keep checking in with her. I don't want to totally disconnect with her. So I'm going to give her a loose rein, kind of let her go here. And then um, we'll pick up a feel and, and kind of redirect her. I don't want to, um, it's like, you know, I, I want to start off at the shallow end of the swimming pool. <laughs> I don't want to put her into the deep end right away. I don't want to make it too hard. Um, and so if I just completely went, well, just give her a big loose rein and just let her cruise around until she chooses to go slow. That would be way too big of a puzzle. And she would be wrong for too long. And so by me just checking in with her and, and changing directions or asking for a hind quarter yield, um, this again, it kind of gives us a gives us a starting point with her. Um, one of the things I want to get to as soon as we can is asking her to lower her head. So I'm just kind of checking. I was trying to see if she was looking and chewing there, or kind of what that meant to her when I'm bending her here. But I like how responsive she is to the halter. This is good. Pick up a feel. Yield those hindquarters. Now this time when I yield the hindquarters, because she does this reasonably well, I'm gonna finish and hold until, see right now she's braced up. So this is what we talk about feel and timing. So the timing is right there. So she yielded her hindquarters, but then she, she settled and then she relaxed. So, so it, it's not enough to just control a horse's body. It's the feel is like, how much pressure did I put on? How quickly did you get there? What part of her body did you ask control? That's all kind of wrapped up into feel, which makes feel hard to teach. Timing is right there when I released, when her body softened and she gave to it, and she wasn't in that braced mindset anymore. So the interesting thing about horses is, the more control we try to take, the worse they feel. The more, the more control we have, the better we feel, okay? And so it's a balance. We're gonna try to go their way, but I want her to come my way. So I'm giving her more room by riding her in a rope halter and giving her a loose rein, hoping that she'll feel a little better like this. But I'm hoping she'll come my way a little bit and allow me to control her body in different positions and mentally kind of just soften and relax. So same thing, the head is kind of up right now. So I'm just gonna hold with my leg and my rein and wait, wait for her to soften right there. So you're just kind of gets, it just gets softer. That's what I'm looking for. I don't like the little rooting with the nose. I'm just gonna observe that. You can't tackle every behavior in the first go. You gotta chip away at it. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna not worry about that right now. I'm just, I'm gonna focus in on loose rein and head going down. That's, that are, those are my two main objectives here. The other thing is I'm gonna focus on her lowering the head in what we would call a yes question. And what I mean by that is, on a, on, when I'm going forward here, if she gets her head up, I might not be able to ask her to put her head down. But if I bend her and disengage the hindquarters, I probably could get her head to put, go down. And so that's where I'm going to put my, my focus uh, when I start doing this. So let's go ahead and ask her to trot a little bit here. Kind of see what we got. We're just going to trot a little bit. If it feels good, we might go with it. If it gets a little... If it gets a little rushy, we'll bend her down. That was good. Yeah, I like that one. So a little bit bracy right there, so I'll pick her up and disengage. Hold. So again, I'll wait till she disengages her hindquarters. And then I'm holding with my fingers very softly here. I'm waiting for her to, to not just give, but to soften right there. You can see her lick and chew, her eyes soften, her body softens. That's the mental shift that I'm, that I'm waiting for. And that is, that is the, big, the big key here. So we're just gonna approach her and treat with that trot a little bit. 
We're just, again, we're building a communication that I'm not gonna manage her speed with the reins. If she goes too fast, I'm either gonna bend her down or I'm going to redirect it. So it's not about shutting it down, it's about redirecting it. Now, if she gets where I feel like I was out of control, that's when I'll bend her down. But that's that's different feel than shutting down. But if I didn't know any better, I would say she's liking this, this feel that we're offering her here on a loose rein. By the way, her head's coming down, her impulsion's coming back here. Pretty good. There's the brace spot. So I'm gonna pick her up here and hold. Hold. I wanna wait for that to soften. Cause I need to practice this anyway. So that just kind of gives me an opportunity. You know, I could just carry on and kind of let that go. Cause she wasn't going too fast or any, anything like that. But it just gives me another chance to go, hey, let's be softer to this. Let's give. We'll just keep approaching and retreating. There we go. I like that. Head stretching down. Ears are forward, nice and relaxed. That's what we're talking about. Again, I'm gonna reach down for her. So I'm slowly getting my hand down there. I always, I always joke at clinics and stuff and I say speed kills. And what I mean by that is when you, when you go fast with a horse, that's when you have the opportunity to scare them. And so a lot of times it's a misunderstanding with people that I think it's the amount of pressure that was there that scares them and really it's how quickly you got there. In other words, you don't have to put very much pressure on to scare them if you do that quickly. So one of the things I'm kind of saying, I find myself saying a lot is slow your hands down. It's like, if you could just give riders one piece of advice, it'd be like, slow your hands down. Your horse will appreciate it. So, so we're going to ride her around some more. Um, we're going to keep going with this, but uh, basically you guys are going to see more of the same. So I uh, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an introduction to what we're doing here with Flo, and uh, we're going to follow her progress in a bit of a series. So. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give us a subscri subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.